Hi everyone, my name is Zi Hao. Uh, thanks for taking the time to read my blog. So today I'll be demonstrating the proof of concept for common vulnerability exposure 2023 Um, So I'll share a little bit of context. So this is actually part of my uh, academic research. It comprises of the vulnerability research and then uh, understand it, find out more information and actually replicate a proof of concept. So today, uh, I will be doing the demonstration on the proof of concept. But if you are interested in the technicalities and the documentation, uh, you can visit uh, my first post uh, in my blog. I actually have the technical details. Uh, what is this about? And it's actually a file extension proofing in depth, how it actually works. Yeah. So over the demonstration, I will briefly explain as well. But uh, for time constraint, uh, I will keep it concise. Yeah. So CDE 2023 h one is actually a WinRs. It's a software vulnerabilities before 6.23 version. So attackers actually use this software to actually execute uh, remote code on target machine to gain full remote access. Uh. So later uh, during the demo, after the demo, you will be much clearer. All right. So what the attacker will first do is to set up the listener. So what we're doing now is actually we are signing up a listener. So the local host will be the attacker's IP address and local port will be using a 1234 to listen for the incoming connection. Okay, so this is ready. So attacker machine actually uh, actively listening for the connection from the target machine. Next, we are going to create the payload to be loaded into the vulnerable software. So if you can see that I've already created one here. So I will show how easy, uh, actually, uh, actually how I created this. Uh. So we'll be using a tool called MSF Venom as well. So actually, I have created this payload already. Yeah. So what is a payload actually? So let me show all of you. So this is the payload just now I created using MSF Venom. Yeah. So this is actually so-called vector that I created using the tool. So just note that uh, when we're talking about software vulnerabilities, right, the, the key object here is actually the version 6.22 uh, this software. So um, actually because of this vulnerability, right, and attacker or uh, so-called the hacker, they can actually exploit the vulnerability using a uh, payload put it inside this file. So I'll later be much clearer how this vulnerability works. Yeah, so. 
Right. So for example, um, if I already create the payload, so uh, it is actually the same file. Yeah. So how to attacker weaponize this vulnerability and to exploit? So uh, let's say for example, we need a decoy file. So let's say we put a generic file without virus one. So Taylor Swift. All right. So I put this. It's my photo. So my photo is here. So what we can do, okay. So before I do anything now, I explain. So if you all realize that Windows, okay, there's a logic in Windows system that it does not allow file with the same same file name. Let's say for example, Windows will not allow uh, to have the same file name or folder name. And one more thing is, when we try to add an empty space behind uh, any file or file name and enter, the system will actually cancel it off. Yeah, it will not happen in a, in, a, in Windows system. Uh. So now, we need to create one folder. We put this my photo inside here. The reason why is I need to rename the folder as same name as my photo. So it's a JPG file. So I have to name the same. Let me create one more folder. Sorry, not this one. So this is the image file. So this is the file. Okay, so now uh, we have this image file, my photo JPG. This folder with the same name, it has to contain this payload in there. All right, so this one I can also rename it as same, my photo. Okay, later uh, I'll explain why it will be much clearer. So now, we use the vulnerable version and add to archive. See, if we select the file, then we use files. So we need to append the image file, this image file append. Let's do. Okay, let's put this aside. So as you can see, um, now we can have two files with the same name. So that's one of the uh, file extension exploit. Uh. And other than that, we have a payload inside as well. So noticing that the, the file name and the extension, the first few strings, um, they are exactly the same. Okay. Now, that's how I have showed that uh, file name cannot have a space behind, but now these files can have a space behind. See? My Murdoch photo, there's a space behind. This as well. Same file name. And this payload as well, I will have to add a space behind. So what is happening actually now is, okay, Windows does not allow same file name and same extension. When we modify all the file names after the extension, right, with an empty trailing space, when Windows try to uh, um, extract the file, it will not be able to identify the file extension, what files type is this belongs to. So it will actually generate an error and it will actually direct to a shell execute process. And this process will run through all the files in this archive, running every single file. So that is the killer part. Uh. Yeah. So without further much ado, let's try. So let's say, for example, uh, how all these people deliver, deliver all this payload. Uh. Let's say, okay. It can be delivered through phishing attempts or to trying to send, send an email. For example, they will send this kind of email. We call it social engineering and phishing as well. Then I found a personal photo online. Is that you? It could create a kind of psychological curiosity and urgency. 
to make you to download the file. So let's say the victim has downloaded the file. So this is the file, my photo. Okay, the victim is, is very nervous, so he open up. And notice from here. Then the JPG, once they launch, okay, let's see here. Connection established. So a reverse connection has been established with, between the victim machine and the target machine. So what is the repercussion right now? And if you all realize that there's a connection established with the attacker machine as well, a TCP connection. Yeah. So now is the gist. On the attacker machine, when the established connection is performed, let's see, who am I? Sorry, <laughs> so uh, let's say system info. I think this is okay. Sorry, I think it's supposed to use a <laughs> Linux command. All right, I'm actually in the targets machine already. So what we can do is um, we can extract files or extract sensitive data, such as um, we can look at the confidential folder. So, and then we can actually look at, see, for the ethical machine, we can actually view all the documents from the target system as well. So you see, this is actually the same documents. Right. And not just that, the ethical can also extract files. So let's say um, there's a private photo on that the private photo is on the victim's machine. We can actually download the whole folder or download the, 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 the photo. So we can go into private photo. And then, oh, so download, demo. Okay, so this has been downloaded to my local drive. So yeah, so that is one of the POC that we actually shows um, the vulnerability. So what just happened is that because of this WinRAR um, the vulnerability, attacker is able to craft um, their high file with the payload and executing the decoy file is going to trigger the payload as well and establish a remote connection with the attacker machine and then the attacker can gain full remote access. So a little bit education here is okay this is my Windows 11. It's always good to keep uh, the antivirus on and uh, keep your system patched and also um, keep the firewall on. So this can actually prevent all this kind of remote access, uh, all these virus, all this software vulnerability thing. Let's say for example, uh, this Windows 11, I'm trying to download the same payload. So I actually have it here. So with the latest Windows and uh, ND malware, Windows is going to block whatever payloads that you try to download. So let's say uh, I still want to keep this payload, okay, keep it anyway. So once it's downloaded, let's see what happens. So track found. And also always keep the firewall on. So let's say the firewall all is on, right? So the IP is 192.164.64.5. Uh, so we can actually exit from here already. So let's see. So let's see uh, the attacker machine, we try to ping the target machine, right? It wouldn't be able to ping. But if I switch off all my firewalls,
So there you see. So window firewall uh, is also always blocking all these kind of uh, unnecessary uh, communication. Same thing, um, if the firewall is on and the anti malware is updated, right? That is impossible to have a reverse TCP to be established between the attacker machine and the victim machine as well. So that's all for my demonstration. So be safe, take care. Thanks.